In this video, we'll learn about types of data in social research. Social research relies on various types of data to understand human behavior, social phenomena, and societal trends. Researchers use different front data collection methods and analyze diverse data types to gain insights into complex social issues. Number one, quantitative data. It refers to numerical information that can be measured and statistically analyzed. It's often used to identify patterns, test hypotheses, and draw generalizable conclusions. Example, a researcher studying income inequality might collect data on household incomes, education levels, and employment rates across different demographic groups. This numerical data can be used to calculate average incomes, income disparities, and correlations between education and earnings. Number two, qualitative data. It is non-numerical information that provides rich, detailed descriptions of phenomena. It helps researchers understand the context, meanings, and experiences associated with social issues. Example, an anthropologist studying cultural practices in a remote village might conduct in-depth interviews with residents, record observations of daily life, and collect personal narratives. This qualitative data provides information about communities' values, beliefs, and traditions that cannot be captured through numbers alone. Number three, primary data. It is collected firsthand by researchers for a specific study. It's tailored to address particular research questions and is often more time-consuming and expensive to gather. Example: A sociologist investigating workplace dynamics might distribute surveys to employees. Conduct focus groups and observe team meetings in various companies. Number four, secondary data. It is pre-existing information collected by other researchers or organizations. It's often more readily available and cost-effective, but may not perfectly align with the current research goals. Example: A policy analyst studying trends in educational achievement might use standardized test scores from government databases and published academic performance reports. Number five. Cross-sectional data. Cross-sectional data provides a snapshot of a population at a specific point in time. It's useful for understanding the current state of social phenomena, but doesn't capture changes over time. Example: A public health researcher might conduct a survey on smoking habits among adults in a city, collecting data on age, gender, education, and smoking frequency. Number six: Longitudinal data. Longitudinal data tracks the same individuals or groups over an extended period, allowing researchers to observe changes and trends over time. Example: A psychologist studying child development might follow a cohort of children from birth to adulthood, regularly assessing their cognitive abilities, social skills, and emotional well-being. Thanks for watching the video.